Hi everyone! In previous video I provided step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a PCF project, do basic changes and run and troubleshoot your control in browser. In this video I'll talk about control manifest file. What is it used for and what parts it consists of. In my video I will use PCF project that I created in my first video. First. I open control manifest input.xml file. I start from the control node. This element describes the main attributes of the control itself. Namespace that was added during initialization of the PCF project. The constructor contains the name of control. The version attribute contains the actual version of the control. I will explain how and when it is used in the next video. The next two attributes, display name key and description key, are responsible for the values that are shown to the customizer when the control is used on the form. The next attribute is control type, and the only option available at the moment is standard. Unfortunately, SDK doesn't explain what is it and how it could be used. The next group I will talk about our properties. So what is the property? Property identifies a specific configurable piece of data that the control expects from CDS. The first attribute is name and it contains the name of the property. The next two attributes look similar. Display name key and description key. Field of usage is the same as for the same attributes on the control level. Display name and description help and explain what this property is and how it could be used. The next group of attributes to be explained are of type and of type group. It is used to describe what type or types of entity attributes property could be used with. If this property can be used only with one type of entity attributes, let's say with option set, use the off type attribute with option set value. If this attribute can be used with the set of types like whole number, decimal and currency, it's required to add a group that describes the set of field types and use off type group attribute with the name you assign to the group. Not all the field types are supported at the moment. On this screenshot you can see what is supported on the left and what is not supported on the right. The next attribute is usage. The usage attribute identifies if the property is meant to represent an entity attribute that the component can change, bound or read only values input that can be bound to the value of attribute or contain the static value. The last one attribute is required and it serves as a marker as to whether it is required or not to provide value for the property. Let me demonstrate how to add a new property to this control. I set the property name equal to color, display name to color and description to color of the text shown, property type to simple text, usage to input and required to true. Property is added, but it's not available inside the TypeScript file. All the properties available for the control are in the manifesttypes.d.ts file. It's possible to add the property you need to it, but the easier and proper way to add properties added to the manifest types.d.ts file is to run npm run script build command. So the property was added to the manifest types.d.ts file and now it can be used inside the code of the control. The next big section is resources. It includes all of the building blocks of your component, code that contains logic of your component, CSS 
that contains tile files, IMG, images, HTML, pages, and resex, resource files. Every node contains two attributes, the path that describes relative path to element and order that is used as in a sequence order of files during the load. Code node has to be used only once. In a future video, I will demonstrate what to do if there is a need to use external JS libraries, jQuery or others. The last group is the feature usage, where a developer can define if a particular feature is required and used by the component. If the feature usage is not available or commented out, all of the features are considered as non-needed and not available for the control code. In the next video, I will demonstrate how to deploy and test control inside CDS environment. Don't forget to set the like under this video and subscribe to my channel.